Hello, and welcome to the myth of Mirti Mert. Mirti Mer. Mirti Myrtle Myrtle. So, welcome to Miss the Bridge. And this myth is about the Fairy Queen. She was born of Dionysius, the god of wine, and a mortal woman. These are not three different people. Dionysius is the god of wine, and he procreated with a mortal woman. Demeter was the goddess of grain and harvest. So basically, you know, bread, the most important thing in the world. Uh, well, that's also how you make alcohol. So very, very important uh, to have your grain and harvested. And so this important lady is uh, friends with Dio whatever sis uh obviously you need green to make alcohol so of course these two were super good friends uh and so demeter was like man why are you always so drunk and you're drunk now when you need to be sober and hand out blessings but it's fine i'll do it i i will do the blessing i've got this so she did when demeter blessed her she smeared pita bread all over her little baby body except for her what the hell was that well, I, I, I bleeped out Mirti's weak spot. We, we can't let people know how to harm her. Uh, I didn't even know we could do that. I want to try. You can do it next time. Get back to the myth. All right, fine. Back, back to the myth telling. So the goddess is got the pita bread and the hummus and is smearing the magical baby with the blessings, but a tidal wave of cuteness, a swarm of cats, crashes around them, being all cute and frolicky and meowy and... And she is so busy petting these cats, she doesn't notice that a sneaky one licked right on her <laughs> And that became the one spot that she could be harmed. And so the cats became the child's downfall and her great love at the same time. And who was this magical bread-covered child, you might ask? Well, her name was Myrte, T-Tai, Myrtai. Murdy, which is a uh, Finnish for Myrtle, which you can tell by my excellent Finnish, um, which is English for Hadas. Why Finnish, though? Aren't we in Greek mythology? <laughs> Everything sounds better in Finnish, don't be ridiculous. Besides, I'm so good at speaking it. Good life lesson. What's next? Well, this magical child did have to grow up, and as she did, she fell in love with hiking and digging through old ruins. In fact, she spent so much time around them, and uh, she actually became the fairy of rocks and bones. It sounds less romantic than a wood fairy, but um, she had magical blood, and she's, that's where she spent her time, uh, frolicking through the ruins of the past, and uh, it's, it's much more badass than, you know, your typical fairy, so really, pr props to her. Wherever she walked, nah. Lighted. She would be followed by a train of rocks and bones that yanked themselves out of the ground to be closer to her. So her god of a dad might have been drunk at her birth and uh, conception and a lot of other times. But he did pass down stuff to her, like her love of all things beautiful and her need to create these beautiful things because of her passion. And she channeled that through drawing and painting. And, um, well, I'm just saying it did impress some people. The art. Have you guys seen this, this fucking art? Is that, is that a watercolor? By, by Hadass? That's, that's like le legitimately fucking great. I love the, that's fucking cool. A mortal man, a Josh, if you will, fell in love with our fairy queen. According to fairy law, a Josh, if you will, had to win her heart in a competition. So, he chose a race. Because how could he lose against those short legs? Look how tiny she was. This was a sure bet. Except she won riding on a unicorn. And it was awesome. But, Murti's apparent tween was thwarted. Because Josh had won on a technicality. Mirti didn't properly register her unicorn, 
And fairies are notorious sticklers for paperwork. Except, plot twist, she was pleased with Josh winning because she fucking planned it from the start. She purposely didn't register that unicorn. She just wanted to show off her awesome riding skills one last time before running off to the land of men and mortals. After a year of being married, Mirti decided she didn't want Josh to age without her. So she stabbed herself in the <laughs> to become mortal. Except all the magical people, the fairies and the mermaids and the unicorns and the gods and the goddesses were all like, shit, this sucks, we miss her. She was super great, what? Man, this, somebody bring her back for a visit, somebody do something. And who stepped up to the plate but the drunk dino, Sisosaurus Rex, and he was all like, uh, uh, burp. That's my fake burp noise. I can't make fake burp noises. But, uh, he had a plan. And there was burping. But again, he was a bit intoxicated. So, he didn't have much of a plan. But he did show up at her house. And you know what he found there? The best home roasted coffee beans that he had ever had. He was like, wow, you are super talented, daughter, you know. And I would like to drink a lot of this coffee. So he did. He drank a la shit bucket barrel. That's a horrible description. I'm sorry. Adva typed copious amounts on the script. I should have stuck to that. But anyways, the point is, he drank so much, he sobered up. Armed with his new sobriety, Dionysius remade Myrti into a hitherto unknown creation. A mortal fairy.